Hello, I'm Dr. James Laredo. I'm a board certified vascular surgeon uh, at the Center for Vascular Medicine. Uh, a little bit about my background. I was uh, born in uh, Chicago, grew up in the Baltimore area, went to the University of Maryland uh, for undergrad and also University of Maryland for medical school. Did my general surgery training up in Boston at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Beth Israel, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, uh, Harvard Medical School, and vascular surgery uh, training at uh, Loyola uh, Medical Center in uh, Chicago. So, Dr. Laredo, could you tell us what is actually DVT? DVT. Okay, a DVT. That stands for deep vein thrombosis. A DVT is a medical condition that occurs when a blood clot forms in a deep vein. These clots usually develop in the leg, thigh, or in the pelvis, but they can also occur in the arm. It's important to know about DVT because it can happen to anyone. And the most serious complication of a DVT is a pulmonary embolism. All right. And can you tell me a little bit about the symptoms that the patient may experience when they have this issue? So uh, typically when a patient develops a DVT, sometimes they may not have any symptoms. About 50% of patients don't have any symptoms. But the most common symptoms that patients report are leg swelling, leg pain, some warmth in the leg, those sorts of things. Anything out of the ordinary in the leg. And uh, usually the uh, patient will, will notice uh, that there's something unusual about the leg, primarily swelling and, and pain. And that should alert them to seek uh, uh, medical evaluation. And typically we recommend that patients consult their, their primary care doctor initially. And then when they're evaluated to make the diagnosis of a deep vein thrombosis, it requires uh, an ultrasound to confirm the diagnosis. And we do get a lot of patients, they complain about leg swelling. So can you explain to the patients what are some of the causes of leg swelling? Well, as far as leg swelling, there are many causes of leg swelling. It's a pretty long list. Anywhere from, from uh, uh, medical conditions that can cause leg swelling that include kidney issues. If, you're, uh, if there's a kidney condition that can cause leg swelling, uh, liver conditions as well, heart conditions, for example, congestive heart failure, those patients end up with leg swelling. Um, in addition, uh, any kind of injury to the leg can lead to leg swelling. As far as vascular conditions that, that can cause leg swelling, one of the most serious conditions is, is what we're talking about, deep vein thrombosis, a blood clot. Uh, other, cause, other vascular causes that can cause leg swelling is uh, venous insufficiency. That's a condition in the veins where uh, the valves that are present within the veins are not functioning uh, properly, which can lead to leg swelling. In addition, um, there is another condition called lymphedema, uh, where the lymphatic system, which is a series of small lymphatic vessels, um, uh, if there's a, a problem uh, in the lymphatic system, that can also cause leg swelling. Awesome. So uh, when a patient comes to, you know, your practice about and complains about leg swelling, can you walk us through how you would, you know, perform a vascular evaluation for the patient? Okay. Well, first, uh, when we evaluate a patient, we want to take a, a, a complete uh, history from the patient. We want to find out, uh, number one, uh, how long has the condition been going on, uh, what is affected, you know, their leg or both legs, um, and other associated symptoms, uh, swelling, pain, uh, redness, uh, those sorts of things. In addition, we also want to find out uh, any history uh, that would uh, put them at risk of developing uh, a deep vein thrombosis, such as recent travel, any uh, recent immobilization, uh, any history of any recent surgery or any kind of injury to the leg. Uh, for example, a, a patient who had ankle surgery and is walking around with a walking boot those patients are at risk of developing uh, deep vein, uh, deep vein thrombosis. So those sorts of things. So that's that's the history part. Then after that, then we perform a, a comprehensive physical examination, a fo focused examination of the of the the leg, and we determine uh, the degree of swelling, 
and so forth and other symptoms if there's tenderness uh, if there's uh, deformity uh, how much uh, edema or swelling uh, is present those sorts of things and after that the way we make the diagnosis of a deep vein thrombosis is with a lower extremity or leg ultrasound and the ultrasound uh, we can perform right in our office uh, it takes about 15, 20 minutes, we can we can make the diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis. And more importantly, uh, if you don't have it, we can also exclude the diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis. And that, and if that were to, if if the uh, workup for DVT is negative, then we need to look at other causes of leg swelling, which we can uh, uh, certainly uh, perform in our office uh, other, you know, and make the diagnosis of other vascular causes of leg swelling. Okay, the, the ultrasound is an, is uh, a non-invasive uh, uh, study. It uses sound waves uh, to uh, generate images. It's the same kind of ultrasound that uh, pregnant women uh, uh, have performed, uh, have done to look at the 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 uh, you know the, the fetus uh, during pregnancy. Uh, a gel is placed on the leg. Uh, the ultrasound probe is is placed on the leg, and it allows us to actually visualize uh, the blood vessels. And specifically, what the vascular technologist is looking for is looking at the vein, and is actually looking to see if there's blood flow in the vein, and also looking to see whether or not there is the presence of a blood clot present. And and that's pretty much how we make the diagnosis, and we can determine where the blood clot is and how extensive it is. Okay, and then. You mentioned um, you went in detail about ultrasound, but is there a way for a patient to tell if a leg or feet swelling is caused by a vascular issue or definitely um, ultrasound is needed? Yeah, ultrasound is 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 uh, is the standard uh, uh, way that we make the diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis for a patient. Um, I don't think they need to worry about uh, if they have a deep vein thrombosis or how they can make the diagnosis, the important thing for a patient is to uh, be aware of the possibility of a deep vein clot or a DVT. And if they notice swelling in their leg, um, then I think they should seek attention, you know, seek, you know, seek medical uh, evaluation to make sure that they don't have, uh, have a deep vein thrombosis. And how about some patients They, you know, they're not going to be immediately scheduled. Is it OK for them to wait one week or two weeks to get a, you know, analysis if, if it's a DVT issue? Well, well, it depends on it depends on their their history and so forth. Um, and also uh, how severe the, the, the swelling of the leg is. If, for example, they have a history of of uh, of uh, uh, sw uh, an ankle injury, for example, a patient twists their ankle and they develop a lot of swelling immediately afterwards and the swelling is, you know, they have swelling um, and the next day they notice that their leg is, swol is swollen um, and, you know, after a day or so there's no improvement and continued swelling, I would think, uh, you know, evaluation uh, would be in order. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, to evaluate the, the ankle injury and also to assess possibly the presence of a, of a deep vein clot. If, however, a patient has an injury to the ankle and notices after a couple of days that the swelling is improving as the injury is improving, then in that case, um, I, I would just follow them. If they're noticing improvement in their symptoms, then I think they can hold off on uh, on a scan or evaluation for a deep vein thrombosis. Okay, and then let's say a patient uh, you know undergoes a diagnosis and it's a DVD case. What happens afterwards? Is their procedure done? Oh, okay. Uh, so you're talking about once they're diagnosed with a deep vein thrombosis. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So once a patient is diagnosed with a deep vein thrombosis, um, the most important thing is to have them get started on treatment. 
and the treatment uh, is anticoagulation or started on a blood thinner. And usually if we were to see a patient um, in the office uh, diagnosed with a deep vein thrombosis, usually what we would do, we would either we would call their primary care physician and let them know that, that they have a deep vein thrombosis. And sometimes the primary care physician would like to start uh, the patient on the anticoagulation and manage that. The other option is to send them to the emergency room uh, so that way they can have the full workup uh, for uh, the DVT. Because there are other conditions that, that uh, patients can have that can uh, put them at risk of developing a DVT. And plus, when they're in the, in the emergency room, they can start treatment immediately right there. Furthermore, if they also have other symptoms, for example, chest pain and shortness of breath, and we're worried about uh, complication of a DVT, such as pulmonary embolism, um, they can have that workup performed uh, in, the, uh, in the emergency room. So the main area is the do these procedures is the uh, emergency room. Do you have a facility in your clinic to prov you know provide these procedures? Um, yes, absolutely. We have uh, we our our clinic is always staffed with a vascular technologist, so we can always um, you know provide that service and make the diagnosis of DVT. Once we make the diagnosis of DVT, then uh, you know uh, the patient needs uh, treatment, and uh, and the treatment would be either for us to start them on anticoagulation or to send them to the emergency room for further uh, evaluation if that's indicated. I see. So um, if the treatment process is you're, you know, uh, give them this medication and then uh, uh, send them to an emergency room for basically for the procedure, correct? Well, well, for further evaluation. Also, depending on the severity of the blood clot as well, um, if, if the patient has significant leg swelling and leg pain, then, you know, that patient is, is best treated in the, you know, in the hospital. So if we were to see a patient with severe leg swelling and a lot of pain, we would do the ultrasound, we could make the diagnosis, and then we would send them to the, uh, send them to the emergency room and to the hospital for further evaluation and treatment. Okay, and then uh, after the emergency treatment, what does the follow-up process look like for patients? Yeah. So, a patient with a with a, a DVT uh, is usually anticoagulated anywhere from or started on a blood thinner and is continued on a blood thinner anywhere from three months to a year, depending on the severity of the of the blood clot and also depending on their uh, underlying medical conditions. Um, whenever a patient is diagnosed with a, a, a DVT, we also need to find out what caused it. So, um, history of immobilization, any kind of you know recent surgery, um, any um, history of oral contraceptive use and smoking, those will put patients at risk of developing a, a deep vein thrombosis. However, if a patient does not have any history of those of uh, those sorts of things that we just mentioned, then, you know, we need to, uh, the patient needs to have a workup to determine, you know, why, uh, why this occurred. One of the things that we need to consider is an underlying, you know, tumor or cancer. In some patients, the first manifestation of a cancer may be a blood clot, uh, can be a blood clot uh, in either an artery or in a vein okay, and a DVT. So we need to keep that in mind and also, uh, you know, need to, to work up the cause uh, and the reason why a patient develops a deep vein thrombosis in addition to treatment. You mentioned um, anyone can get diagnosed with a DVT. Is there some uh, precautionary measures patients can take, you know, to avoid this? Uh, yes, that's a good question, uh, particularly travel. Uh, travel uh, is a big cause of uh, deep vein thrombosis, um, particularly long, you know, airplane rides or long rides in cars. Uh, typically, for patients who are uh, traveling by airplane, we recommend that they get up and walk around every couple of hours, you know, and and you know, exercise and you know, move their feet and, and you know, flex their ankles and their knees uh, when they're seated. 
in addition, if you are traveling in a car, we would recommend stopping every every you know one to two hours, you know, to get out of your car and walk around, you know, maybe for you know for bathroom stops, uh, those sorts of things. In addition, if you're going to take a long airplane flight or even uh, a, a, a car ride, use of uh, compression stockings, graduated compression stockings, are also uh, helpful in preventing uh, deep vein clots. Yeah, okay, sure. So uh, other factors that increase the risk of DVT, um, there are a, a previous history of a deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism, family history of DVT or pulmonary embolism, age, the risk of a deep vein thrombosis increases with age, obesity, um, a catheter located in a central vein. So for, for example, patients with a, with a PICC line uh, or patients with, a, with a, an IV or special uh, line in their neck, uh, there are also patients who have underlying clotting conditions that put them at risk of developing clots. Uh, there are medical conditions that uh, put a patient at increased risk of developing a deep vein thrombosis, heart disease, lung disease, cancer, as we mentioned, um, inflammatory bowel disease. In addition, uh, increased estrogen, patients who are taking birth control pills, patients who are on hormone replacement therapy, uh, which is sometimes used after uh, menopause. Also pregnancy, uh, uh, women who are pregnant are at increased risk of developing uh, a deep vein thrombosis. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, other causes, injury, uh, any kind of injury, um, recent surgery and immobilization, confinement to a bed, sitting for a long time. For example, uh, you've heard in the, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, these uh, uh, young, uh, young teenagers or young men who are uh, uh, gamers, who are uh, on their computers, uh, you know, playing video games for several hours can also develop uh, uh, deep vein thrombosis. So those are the main risks, uh, risk factors for DVT. Oh, what I would recommend, uh, what we would recommend is if at all you're worried about a DVT, call your primary care doctor and, and uh, for evaluation because it's very, very easy for us to make the diagnosis of a DVT. And um, what we, yeah, it's very easy for us to, you know, to perform the, the venous duplex ultrasound to make the diagnosis and also to exclude the possibility of a deep vein thrombosis. Well, the, the primary care doctor will do exactly what we did. We'll, you know, we'll do, we'll uh, take a history and, and perform a physical examination. And if it's indicated, uh, he or she will probably send their patient for uh, a duplex ultrasound. Um, they can, you know, the primary care doctor can can send the patient to us at the Center for Vascular Medicine, and we can we can uh, quickly uh, perform the the venous duplex ultrasound and make the diagnosis of uh, of DVT or or uh, exclude the diagnosis.